some trucks built to serve. Welcome back. We'll get to Anthony Davis in just a second. But first, Mavs and Kings and Luka Doncic getting his arm held still somehow makes the shot. Nick. Welcome back, Luka. A little seven-game absence with the ankle injury. He comes good back. Last night. Oh, hell, what was it, 33, 12, and 8, something like that? That's exactly what it was. Another great night from Luka. Hawks and Cavs, John Collins rises up, puts it down, one-handed alley-oop. Uh, I can confirm the only people that saw this game were the people in the building. <laughs> there were a lot of NBA on last night. If you were watching Whoa, that, Hawks that was Cavs. Nice, though. That's nice, that's... Oh, Yeah, And I like John I Collins' double wristbands. I wish more guys brought that back. I like that look. Old school? Yeah, old school double wristbands. I like it. Heat, Jazz. Bomb out of Bayou driving and putting oh. Rudy Gobert on a poster. You like that, Twan? Yeah, when you dunk on somebody like that, that's what you call the shimmy right there. <laughs> that's yeah. what you shimmy when you dunk on them right there. Def yeah, you dunk on the defensive player of the year. Why are you supposed to shimmy Absolutely. on right there? Absolutely. Or, or with the inventor the of the shimmy. Where, wait, wait, oh, no, I'm missing I mean, just, kind of just a little bit. Oh, yeah. subtle. A little bit. Watch subtle. out. Uh, so last night, LeBron and Anthony Davis led the Lakers to a crucial win over the Nuggets in their last game before the All-Star break. So the two All-Stars became the first pair of Laker teammates with 30 points and 10 boards in the same game since Kobe and Paul Gasol back in 2008. AD was recently asked who he believed to be the best player on the team right now. Take a listen to his answer. Are you the best player on the Lakers? Uh... I think I'm up there. <laughs> I mean, I see the things that this guy, LeBron, does. Um, what is he, 35? 35. 35, year 17. It's unreal. And every time I mess with him, I'm like, man, you're getting old, man. You Earlier this year, he had a dunk on a break, and it was like something so simple. And I told him, I'm like, man, that's a three. And so... When he did the same dunk that Kobe did, you know, the... Oh, yeah. I don't even know what he did. He came to Double me after the game. Reverse. Yeah, he came to me after the game and said, yeah, that was an eight and a half, wasn't it? <laughs> and I didn't know what he was talking about. He was like, early in the year, he told me I had a three. He said, so next time I got a fast break, it was going... And I was like, all right, you getting there? He was like, yeah, I'm not old yet. <laughs> and so, you know, we joke about it. But the things, you know, he, he does in year 17 at 35 still amazes me. Um, and I mean, so I'll, I'll give it to him right now. <laughs> Anton, I'm going to ask you the same question that Dave asked AD. Who is the best player on the Lakers, LeBron or AD? Nick, don't get mad, but no, I, be I believe right now in this day and age, I believe that AD is the best player on the team. I think what, Le what AD is able to do on both ends of the floor separates itself a little bit. I think LeBron is not, if it's a big situation, he'll play defense. So I think he's left the defensive end alone. When you think about some of the things LeBron, if he'll run down the block every now and then, but what he, AD brings for them defensively as well as offensively, we saw that last night, too. And then I also got to take a, another shot, too. I like the fact that AD makes his free throws too late. So I think you can go to him. I think late game, this is the first time I think in LeBron's career that if I'm drawing up a late play, I may, I know LeBron took the shot last night, but I may have, to, I may go to AD because he can give me maybe a little bit more versatility because he can get all the way to the basket and get fouled and not be afraid to get fouled. Not saying LeBron will be afraid to get fouled, but I know he can get there and make the free throw. So he adds a little bit more um, components to his game right now than LeBron. And we know LeBron's a great triple-double threat in every night, but both ends of the floor and being dominant and can both dominate both ends of the floor, I got to go with AD. So the, the free throw thing, no one can argue. And LeBron wouldn't argue it. It's frustrating. It's confusing. It He was never a great, great free throw shooter. But it's the last three years he's become a liability at the free throw line, and it's inexplicable. So the, the, And it does seem to affect some of his very late game decision making. So that is, that's a fair critique. And as far as the defensive end, I think you are discounting how good LeBron's been defensively throughout this season. But Anthony Davis is right now the defensive player of the year. Uh, he, Giannis maybe should sweep all the awards, but he's certainly, Anthony Davis certainly top three defensive player of the year. And I think probably would be the Vegas favorite to win it right now. Here's why I disagree with you though. It is actually in that clip you got a little window into it. He talks about how earlier in the year that he said to LeBron that was a three. And months later, LeBron does the Kobe dunk and says to him, hey, that was an eight and a half. And Anthony Davis didn't even know what he was talking about. And he had to remind him, no, months ago you said. And that's where LeBron's still the best player in basketball. His body is not atrophied enough. 
He's not the athlete he once was, but he's still top seven, eight athlete in the league. And his mind is so much sharper than everyone else's. The photographic memory, the understanding of who needs a shot when, who is going to be open in what spot, what guy do I need to make sure gets a look so he gives me what he needs to give me on the defensive end. He is an offense unto himself. It's why, as great as Anthony Davis is, when he's on the court this year without LeBron, the Lakers get outscored. The Lakers have a negative point differential. Now, part of that's because the Lakers haven't built the team with another competent regular ball handler, mm -hmm. but it's also because LeBron is doing part of everyone's job for them on the offensive end. He's the only player in basketball you can say that about right now. And the when we talk about what would this team look like with just one of these guys, they wouldn't be a championship contender without both of them. We know that. Mm -hmm. But I think LeBron, with this roster, without Anthony Davis, would have this team similarly to how he had it last year prior to the injury in the playoff picture. I don't know that we, given Anthony's history in New Orleans, I don't know that we can assign him the same benefit of the doubt. So even though while one day I think, and that day might be next year or the year after, Anthony Davis will surpass him, I think right now LeBron's still the best player in the whole league with the only person contending for him being Giannis. So I certainly think he's the best player on the Lakers. Well, I believe that you, you make some valid points. Obviously, I think LeBron's going to make the right play. There's only a few guys that do make the right play almost every time. Magic Johnson did, yeah. Michael Jordan, and LeBron James, where they made the right play, got the right guy to shot, no matter what the situation was. That's not Anthony Davis's job. But what, when it comes to the Lakers, his job is to dominate the inside, be the best defensive player on the floor. He does that the best. Then offensively, at any given moment, he can get you 35 to 40. We saw that his scoring has dropped down a little bit, but now he's starting to pick it back up. Yep. And then late in games, I trust him. Um, he's, he's a guy that can, you know, I'm not saying he's the best clutch, you know, late game player, but he last night showed me that his versatility to be able to step out, make a three late, have the confidence to take the three. I think one thing that LeBron has rubbed off on him and we don't give LeBron enough credit for is the durability, not let him sit out. Playoffs in a position he's never really been in. The guy's only played 13 career playoff games. They've been an underdog in every series he's ever been in, even the one where they swept Portland surprisingly a few years ago. And then they've gotten annihilated by Golden State both years. They've the the two playoff losses were to Golden State where they were huge dogs. Point I'm awkwardly trying to make is once he goes through this postseason and has this experience, I think we're going to see his game jump a grade right. that we've been kind of waiting for, that it can only jump from the playoff experience, from going through those battles. So I think next year, like LeBron's game is obviously done jumping. Like we, we know where he is. Question is, can he maintain it? Once Anthony Davis goes through, whether they win the title or not, even though I think they will, they, I think you're gonna see the best version of Anthony Davis, a version we never got to see in New Orleans because he never had that playoff experience to learn from starting next season. All right, ask same question next season. <laughs> All right, I got it. I'll definitely remember that. Take a break. Coming up, did Antonio Brown convince you he belongs in the NFL next season? On James is in year 17, still doing this. Look at that jam. Finished 32 points, the triple double on the night. Regulation was just not enough time to settle things. We go to OT. 331 left. LeBron finds a wide open AD. For three, a minute later, LeBron finds a wide open AD for three. He finished with 33 points. Nuggets down three with 25 shoot seconds it. left. Nikola Jokic says, not going to shoot it. I'm going to pass it up. I'm going to try to kick it out to the corner. And then look what happened. It got stolen. Lakers hold on to win 120 to 116. How about this? They now take a 41 and 12 record into the All-Star break. After the game, LeBron was asked about how important this game was. Take a listen. Every opportunity that we get to play in a close game versus a tough opponent, um, you know, it's a learning experience for all of us. It, it prepares us, you know, for a postseason game where it's going to be back and forth, back and forth. I thought tonight was a playoff atmosphere, both teams being number one and number two in the West Conference, you know, jockeying for positions. I know the break was com coming, but I didn't want to take this opportunity for granted. Um, I wanted to, you know, play extremely well tonight for our ball club. I wanted us to play extremely well going, in, going into the break on a high note. And, uh, you know, our team, uh, we responded very well.
This is a very intense LeBron James for a post-game <laughs> sit-down on a bench and ask to answer a couple of questions. How impressive was this win for the Lakers? That is a great, great win for the Lakers to win in Denver, their second time winning in Denver this year, in a game where they could have let go of the rope a couple times. They're down 13 midway through the second quarter. Monty Morris foolishly barks at LeBron after hitting a three. The Lakers instantly go on a 27-8 run to retake control of the game. But then four minutes left in the game, they're down six. Four minutes left down six, you can come back, but you need 